Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today let's just look at the exterior of this model and talk about some of the techniques. So first off, you can see down here I have some stone steps. This is a technique I actually recorded or described in a video years and years ago, where it's uh, simple slabs drawn in a you know, irregular shape, and then I've gone to the custom edge settings and I've set a non-vertical side. So just to make this an extreme, let's do 130. You see, you get that uh, crazy side. So I've just set those to 95, 100, whatever subtle thing just to make it feel a little more natural. So there's that. Next, let's look at these posts. This is my typical complex profile siding. I've talked about this a lot. So that's a wall. Uh, next up is this. This is a complex, or this is a segmented column. I love segmented columns and beams. So this is one column. And if we zoom in, you can see it's got, oh, sorry about that. You got all these steps. And so how these are created is I've done a segmented column, as I've already said too many times. And then each one is just, you know, an inch and a half, half an inch, inch and a half, quarter inch. And some of these are uh, rectangular in section. And others, like this one here, are trapezoidal, so it has a different top and different bottom. Uh, so just do that a bunch of times. This Everything is a fixed distance except this centerpiece, which is flexible, so I can stretch it up and down. I'll show you that in a moment. And then... To create all this, you know, you make one or two, then when you hit add, it will duplicate the segment you just created, so it's actually pretty easy to create all these layers. And then you can change the surface texture, uh, or override the surface texture, or just change the building material of each segment if you want to have them not all the same color. Uh, just to illustrate that flexible center, is if I stretch this up and down, you can see I'm not stretching the base of the capital, I'm just stretching the height of the column, so that center section. We go back to the rest of the 3D model, and look at what else. So, water table here is, uh, not surprising, a complex profile beam that is a simple uh, 2x3 uh, cap with a little but there, this, just to show you, if you select that and you hit uh, chamfer, you could say, okay, I want it chamfered at three quarters of an inch, and I'll just do that. So, uh, and then what I did there before is pet palette, this little option, it removes the chamfer. So I've got that, and then this is just two by four. It's a beam, super simple. I'm not going to save those changes. And then I, have, you know, run that around the building. The last two pieces of trim I'll talk about, unless I do another one, which I tend to do, is this bracket. This bracket is three pieces. They are all beams. This vertical piece you'd think would be done with the column, but to keep everything the same tool to make it easy for editing, I've made them all beams. So this is a slanted beam, this is a tall beam, and then this is a segmented beam where it has um, rectangular piece, and then the end is a simple uh, half inch thick, and it goes from four and a half inches down to three and a half inches, so it is a um, trapezoid. Something to note when doing segmented columns and beams is you can see how this comes in nicely to the center. It's because it's going towards the reference line. If I change the reference line to the top, you can see it's now Seg or it's now sloping that way if I do it to the side, etc. So when you're doing complex profile beams and you want the right um, slope of trapezoidal elements, uh, both for beams and columns, you need to make sure that the reference line is in the right location. Last piece I will show today is this column, or this beam right here. Uh, so it's fascia, so I've run just the long beam, it's segmented. Oh, sorry about that. Let's change back to the right 3D settings there. Uh, and then here I have set the end of this beam 
to be 150 degrees so we get that that cool sharp edge there so again that's just the end conditions if i set that to vertical you can see it changes there or to flat it's flat weird like that because it has a segment at the end or it's sloped like that uh anything else oh just just for fun i'll show you uh this if i hide all the siding you can see i've just got kind of a plywood box there and then here for these windows uh this is all modeled with columns and beams let me choose a better layer here we go other layers uh you can see that this is all columns and beams and i've turned off the trim on these windows because these are all um individual windows uh and ganging is kind of weird to get the trim to work so i've just kept the sill on and then modeled the trim separately i've also modeled the trim separately on the interior as well so you can see that it it cleans up nicely with columns and beams last thing uh, for this house i wanted to just show the clients their new primary bedroom and put in some furniture and then i wanted a little decoration on the wall so i took photos of the existing house made it black and white and then used the uh, picture image and picked the right image in the sorry in the picture 26 object so it creates some cool artwork in the house that feels appropriate to the house and is kind of a nice easter egg when the clients are walking around the bimx model that's all i got for you today thank you very much um remember to like this video subscribe to the channel do all that youtube stuff and have a great day thank you